Hey everyone, and welcome back to Open. I'm Rina Valentin, your host, Di Cafe Con Leche, for the next hour, inviting you to get social with us online. That is, tweet us and follow us on Instagram at BronxNet TV and like us on Facebook at Open BronxNet Television. And of course, while you're there, don't forget, follow me on Twitter, FB, Instagram, Insta Stories, and LinkedIn at Rina Valentin. So although the pandemic has brought a new normal to everyday living, the holidays continue to bring depression and sadness for most people. And well, our next guest is a certified board cognitive behavioral psychologist and the chief of psychology at Montefiore Medical Center. Today, he joins us to discuss his new book, The CBT Workbook for Mental Health, that is filled with exercises to help transform negative thoughts to manage one's well-being. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Simon A. Rego. Hello and welcome. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Welcome back, Dr. Rego. Pleasure. Thanks for drafting this up for us. <laughs> well, thank you for giving it a read. I really appreciate you spreading the word about how this can be helpful to, I think, almost anyone, especially during the holiday season. So let's start by introducing everyone to the term cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, let's define it for everyone so they understand um, its origins. Yeah, for sure. And it, and it does sound very technical and scientific. So it's important to, I really appreciate you saying, let's start with a simple version of what it is. Right? So cognitive is our term for what goes on in our minds. So another way to think of cognitive or cognitions are thoughts or ideas we have about things. So the C of CBT or cognitive behavioral therapy is really just addressing one's thought patterns, the way we think about things and differentiating that from the way things are. There's things that happen and then there's the way we think about things that happen and they're not always the same. And then the, the B of the behavioral part is our actions. What you do and what you don't do are behaviors. So the things that we could see someone doing or not doing and then in CBT, we look at thoughts and behaviors and see how those play together to influence our moods like anxiety or depression or anger or sadness. So CBT does those, it looks at thoughts and actions and sees how it influences our mood. So it's almost like taking a look into your belief system. The big part, one half of it at least, is examining the beliefs we hold and teaching people to be willing to be curious about those beliefs or maybe a little less rigid about those beliefs, especially if we find those beliefs are connected to emotions that we find quite upsetting. So do you find that since the pandemic that mental health awareness has heightened and that um, there's a, a, a destigmatization that is actually uh, being exercised and people kind of just embracing the possibility that they do need uh, additional assistance? Well, I'll give you, the, I'll give you half of it and a, and a hope for the other half. I definitely think with the pandemic, if there is a silver lining in this dark cloud, it is that now we're all being confronted with the reality that mental health plays in our life. And I don't think there's a person that hasn't been touched emotionally by the pandemic. The stigma part, I still worry about a little bit, unfortunately. We're still in a society where people mistakenly think that they're weak if they struggle emotionally or mentally, or that it's all made up and in someone's head, and it's not the same as a medical condition. And I think it's getting better because you see more role models, celebrities, athletes talking about it, but I still, unfortunately, think we have a ways to go there. Or better, but there's... So yeah. Well, it starts with the awareness, right? And so, you know, you, you mentioned st stress, uh, depression, anxiety, and they're all uh, also mentioned in, in your book. Um, and so I learned somewhere, and, and you know, you're the expert, that depression can loan itself to thoughts of the past, whereas anxiety can loan itself to thoughts of the future. And, and the one thing I really enjoy about your book is that it's a workbook. It's not just a book to read, it's a book to exercise. So can you elaborate further on the difference between depression and anxiety? Yeah, it's a great, great question. And, and so they're both emotions, right? One, one says they feel depressed. And when you feel depressed, we get a sense of what that means. It's a, it's a sort of more extreme version of sadness, right? And there's a lot of symptoms that come with that, but they're usually 
lead people to feel quite down. Whereas anxiety is really an emotion of, of stress and threat. And it gears people up in that fight or flight response and makes them feel quite agitated or worked up. And so we distinguish the two often, back to our book about thinking about, about the relation to thoughts have to these two emotions. And you're exactly right. There tends to be, in depression, a focus on the past, a, all the things in our life that, we, that went wrong or that we've lost or that we've struggled with. And we, we ruminate over those, which means we go over them over and over again, which can be tied with a depressed mood. Whereas with anxiety, we tend to have our thoughts looking towards the future and have asking ourselves a bunch of what if questions that we answer in a negative way. What if this happens? And that'll be really bad. What if that happens? That's not going to be good. And in doing that over and over again, that's what we call worry in our thought patterns. And that leads us to feel quite anxious if we're always predicting doom and gloom in our future. That's how we like to distinguish the two. And so the goal is, and, and you definitely bring it up in your book, is to always come back to present, which sounds easier said than done. That is certainly one of the ways that you can learn to manage thoughts related to depression or anxiety is to build the muscle of your mind into focusing on the present, the here and now, the actual only place we have any control over. We, we can't do a thing, unfortunately, about what's gone on. And we have relatively little control over what's going to happen, especially in, in the far future. So if we can focus our mind right to the present and learn how to, that's a muscle to be built, how to turn our attention here, then it can free us up from the thoughts that lead to depression and anxiety and actually create a space where we can take productive action and do things to help create the future that we want and shape the direction we want to go in. So, Dr. Rego, why do you think it is that people tend to fall into this depression during the holidays? Yeah, you know, it's, you think it's a positive time. We see the commercials, we, see, we read the books, and it seems like it's filled with so many positive moments, social gatherings, present exchanges. I think what it also does, unfortunately, is it tends to amplify some of the challenging moments we've had or have in our lives, which can lead to the holiday stresses and blues, such as if, if we've lost people, particularly in the pandemic, typically holidays remind us of past memories of time spent with people we love or care about. And if they're not there, we can feel the loss and feel sad about them not being there anymore. And similarly, with the holidays comes a lot of pressures to go to the holiday parties, buy the gifts, meet the deadlines for the end of the year, get be out and doing a lot of things. And if you're financially stressed, or if you put too much effort into doing all those things, you can feel quite burnt out in the process. So there's a lot of pressure and stress inherent in trying to make the perfect holiday dinner or holiday function. And people tend to overcommit to those things and then feel the the weight of those on themselves emotionally, which could be stress or anxiety as well. And so um, in closing, I, I, you know, I'm a, a fervent meditator myself personally, and I know you also um, bring, um, make mention of a mindful meditation, which of course allows one to come back to present. Now, if one is dealing with all of this chaotic energy, um, and, and even though you have this book to be exercised as a means of reference, um, if they're not familiar with this work and or understand the language, um, would you say that meditation is the easiest way to get there? I certainly think it's, it's a way to get there. And, and what I might do is is say we have to demystify what meditation is about too because I think a lot of people will think you have to be in a lotus position sitting under a tree somewhere and there's there's lots of ways that one can be mindful meditation being one of them that that create the same sort of impact and I would say mindfulness you can do in almost any activity it's really just attuning your mind to the present so you can mindfully brush your teeth you can mindfully eat a meal you can mindfully have a walk. And, and then meditation is another way to really amplify mindfulness. You can sit and focus on your breathing. 
for example, but there are a multitude of ways in, in urban living that one can practice being mindful and reap the benefits of, a, of staying present in the moment without having any, needing any special equipment or any special tools, but just a willingness to, to come back to the moment and, and focus on what's here in front of you. And that can be extraordinarily helpful in letting go of past upsetting events and also future-oriented worries. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming on our show and, and loaning your expertise to our viewers. Um, that is Chief Department of Psychology at Montefiore Medical Center, Dr. Simon Rago. He's also the author of the CBT workbook, Mental Health. And if you guys are interested in obtaining the book, uh, the CBT workbook for mental health, it's available on Amazon. And for more on Dr. Simon Rago and um, mental health resources, you can visit uh, montefiore.org slash psychiatry. Okay, we do have to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll hear about a new Latinx musical all about the Bronx fires. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 